For more on cross-strait relations and the U.S., we're joined now by political and economic affairs commentator Einar Tangen in Beijing. So, Einar, with the current pandemic and everything else going on, how would you describe the status of cross-strait relations? Well, it's a, it's, it's a big change in a year. Remember 2018 in November, the local elections, uh, Tsai Ing-wei's party was absolutely crushed by the, uh, the, uh, the traditional uh, alliance party. And they now she has had a massive comeback due mostly to uh, what happened in Hong Kong. She rode this kind of nationalist streak, and she's still continuing to do that, uh, although in her inaugural address she was very clear that she is going to be uh, looking a lot more at domestic issues as she tries to struggles with her um, party's ability to change Taiwan. Remember, 10 percent of the people working in Taiwan actually work on ma in the mainland, and this is one of those issues that you cannot get away. It would be a third to a quarter of all of Taiwan's exports. It's an export-driven nation. So it's very hard to see how she's going to change this. She ha she's just continuing more of the policies that she had before, but definitely looking to the U.S. to support her. The difficulty there is it's not certain that the U.S. will have much to offer her given their own economic straits. And, you know, Einer, we know that China-U.S. tensions are already high with so much going on. What do you make of these recent remarks by Secretary Pompeo congratulating Tsai Ing-wen? China has threatened to retaliate because of those comments. And what would that look like? Well, I mean, right now, Pompeo and also his vice guy, Pottinger, are trying to, in essence, red bait China into some sort of reaction. You'll note that the number of Freedom of Navigation Act uh, sending destroyers and ships through the Taiwan Straits has doubled. Uh, this is just clearly provocation. Uh, uh, the Trump administration wants not a war, but they want to point to some sort of incident uh, that they can say that China is somehow the aggressor and it justifies all of their rhetoric that China is the evil one. In terms of what uh, China can do, uh, there are a range of options, uh, everything from, uh, you know, uh, more tariffs and things like this. Uh, but I think China will be looking more uh, towards a long picture. They need to do something to change the uh, highly biased and toxic international press atmosphere that is uh, continuing to pound down on them on a daily basis with accusations that do not seem to have any merit. And we have a long way to go until November. Einar Tangen, thank you so much for joining us from Beijing.